What's going on guys, Etika from the Etika World Network here, and as gamers, E3 usually excites every single one of us, but 2016 has seen a couple of curveballs thrown at it, with Nintendo deciding to not showcase anything about the NX, which we've all been excited for, for over a year now, and then having Zelda be the main focus of the event, potentially the only game shown at the event, but we don't know that for a fact, and having Zelda as the only playable game at the event. With these details alone, the hype levels of E3 have been wavering for the past few weeks, but it's the facts of EA, Activision, and Disney deciding to not showcase anything at the event, no exhibitor booths, no press events, no, no nothing, basically. These are the events that have had people saying that E3 is potentially on its last leg. I've seen so many people say that they want me to talk about this whole thing, so in this video, we're going to be looking at all of the facts and deciding for ourselves if this truly means the demise of E3 due to these major companies not going to the event. A quick Google search will show you that there's a plethora of articles from major gaming publications out there who are all coming to the same conclusions using the same facts that we have. But I wanted to take things down a more interesting route and shake the boat a little bit. You're all going to kill me for this, I know, but we have an insider with inside information as to why these companies are making these moves and how they signify the end of E3. And it's a post on 4chan, I know, I know. The thing that makes this post interesting is that while a lot of the claims can be definitely taken with a grain of salt, it pulls up so many actual facts and real evidence that we already have right now to make a lot of these conclusions and to explain the rationale behind some of these company moves. So we're gonna be looking at the facts of this insider post and if it's potentially real, we may just come up to an interesting conclusion for ourselves. I will have the post linked in the description of this video. Big shout out to Max Miller as well for linking me to that information. I appreciate it, man. And we're going to look at these facts and see for ourselves if this means the end of E3 or not. Okay, first, let's deal with the major company dropouts. Do any of you know that EA, Disney, Activision, and War Gaming have dropped out of this year's show? They all used to book massive floor space, especially EA, and now they're all going to be no-shows. Apparently EA would rent out the entire entrance hall of the E3 Convention Center. That would be a big part of E3's income, most likely. EA is actually holding their own show that will be a paid event open to the public and will compete directly with E3. We know this right now as a fact. EA has announced that they're going to do their own event. It's going to be called EA Play, EA Plays, I don't know, one of those two. It's an open to the public event and it will be a paid event as well, competing directly with E3. But open to the public. If there's something you may not know about E3, I'll inform you, it's not open to the public at all. You have to have a major gaming industry connection to be able to go to E3, or you have to be hooked up in the industry yourself. You have to be working professionally for some gaming outlet, or you can be somebody with a lot of influence, like a YouTuber or a blogger who has a lot of followers. And that's another way that you can get into E3. It's funny because I actually had a connection to be able to go to E3 this year, but I couldn't because of this fact. Let's just say that you have somebody who's hooked up in the industry, Jimmy, knows someone in Nintendo and they managed to get reservation slots for Jimmy and for you to purchase tickets to go to E3. Well, that's great. Considering how closed off the event is, it's a big thing that you even have reservations to purchase tickets to go, right? That's major. Most people in the world don't. But now there's a whole nother issue to take into consideration because let's just say that you want to take Jimmy up on his reservation offer. All you got to do is buy the ticket. No big deal, right? I, I want to go to E3. I'll easily buy a ticket. No problem at all. All you got to do is pay 1000 fucking dollars for the ticket itself and you can go to E3. That's nothing. Right? That's, that, no, no, no. That's a lot of fucking money, dude. And then that's probably not even counting taxes. And then on top of it all you have to actually get your ass to LA and you're gonna have to do it during a time of high traffic because there'll probably be a lot of planes going and coming to E3 during that time period so you're gonna pay a lot of money for your flight and then let's take into consideration that you also need a place to lay your head for three days you can't just do it in the back of a fucking car so you're gonna have to rent out a hotel room in an area which most likely has a lot of places already booked up so you're gonna be spending out of your ass to be able to get that with the flight the hotel food along the way, remember that, and then the ticket itself, you're looking at spending anywhere from $2,000 to maybe $3,500 to go to E3. That's a massive amount to pay to do anything in life. And that's coming from my perspective. Maybe there's some ballers out there who, you know, that's easy for them. They can easily throw out a couple of change and get it, but not me. While I do appreciate the person that hooked me up with the E3 reservation, there was no way I'd be able to pay that amount of money to be able to go to the event, so sorry. Point of all of that talk was me to explain to you, E3 is not meant 
for the consumer or the regular guy. It's a press event, one that's meant for the upper echelon, the special people in the gaming industry to go to, the people that have the power, the influence, the viewers. Those are the people that are invited to go to E3. EA deciding to have an event open to the public is massive because we've never seen anything like that done with an E3-like event. Even though it'll be general admission to get in there, I'm sure it's not gonna be anywhere near $1,000 per person. Sure, maybe you won't get treated as nice in EA plays as you would in E3 because usually there, the companies just basically suck the dick of the press but at least you'll be able to experience a lot of these early access games and titles and information the same way like the big wigs in the industry can without having to spend out of your ass and give a kidney for it. Considering EA's evil corporation history, I gotta admit, that's a nice move on them. So thank you for making an event that a lot of people can go to without having to blow themselves up. Why is this important? Because the ESA books the LACC Convention Center, then they sell floor space at a massive premium to all the companies that attend the show. How much does that floor space cost? Millions, I shit you not. This is another fact. It doesn't take Einstein to be able to guess how much money these guys are paying for it. It's gotta be in the millions, considering how prestigious E3 is. If you wanna present there, you wanna have a space there, a booth, even a two by four area is going to cost you a lot of money. During the height of the GameCube era, I got a Nintendo rep to tell me that they actually spent $8 million to exhibit at E3 for three days. $8 million, nigga, fuck! Okay, so now the show is losing millions, and that's a devastating blow, but it gets worse. Smaller companies are also dropping out of the expo, and conventions like this are also taking a big hit. And it ain't limited to E3 either, but also San Diego Comic Con, and a lot of other cons are also going to be downsizing. But this is the clincher. The ESA needs to book the LACC years in advance. Whenever you leave the show on the last day, there's always a sign that announces the dates for the next show. It's a long-standing E3 tradition. We all know now that the LACC is not booked for next year, so either they're moving the show or it's not going to happen at all. Some people claim that the long overdue renovation of the LACC is going to cause the show to move to another city, but here's the big problem. Companies no longer see investing in E3 as a viable use of revenue. There's a growing feeling that they need to take things directly to the consumer and not hide them behind the press at a trade event. He makes a good point here. Remember the thing I said about companies sucking the dicks of the press at E3 to get good reviews and positive reception on their new product? This is something that can almost be taken to manipulative terms. Sometimes, a lot of these companies can perceive the press to be somewhat negative because the press influences the general population and maybe if they're not shown as nice of a time or see something that really isn't too exciting for them, they'll shit on it on their own press report or maybe on their own news report articles, YouTube videos, and that might put negative influence out there for the general masses who haven't even gotten a chance to try their product out for themselves. Even though the press has a huge influence on the entire community of gamers out there, it doesn't necessarily mean that something the press sees as bad in their own small preview will be perceived as bad by the entirety of the gaming community. You can't just make that assumption. The fact that this insider is saying that companies want to bring their products directly to the people rather than through the press is important. Companies are fed up with the constant negativity from gamers and the press, and they're also fed up with the gaming press in general. If only you knew how much the big companies hate the gaming press. The feeling is that why should they spend millions to exhibit for three days when they can take their products directly to the fans online or at their own events like Sony, Blizzard, and EA have done in the past. But sometimes that influence isn't necessary and bringing your products directly to the gamers themselves could also be beneficial and you don't have to spend as much money or suck as much cock to do it. No one can justify spending millions on the show. The only one who benefits from all this is the ESA who profits in the millions every E3. So finally, the big thing is that companies have wanted to drop out of the show for years, but they're afraid that if they do, their competitors will get the spotlight. It was actually EA and Sony who killed the show in 2007 and the ESA was actually forced to pay a $3 million fine for breaking their contract with the LACC that year. And if you don't know what I mean by this, in 2007, E3 had scaled back a huge amount of attendees because of companies deciding to hold their own events at different hotels in the area. From a regular attendance of around 60,000 people, it dropped to 10,000 in 2007. Now other companies are joining them and this looks like it'll be the last year for E3. From this point on, the article makes a lot of guesses, I suppose. I mean, if it's an insider, if you want to believe it or not, maybe you can see some of these as facts, but I'm not going to go into these details, but we're kind of going to skip forward and see the further points that are made about why E3 is going to be ending soon. Another thing that's turning off exhibitors at E3 are the constant leaks, which are almost impossible to control. 
The feeling is, why spend millions on the show when everything gets leaked beforehand? It used to be easy to keep a lid on this stuff, but now with mobile devices and the general disloyalty of a certain generation, millennials, that's me nigga, no one can keep anything under wraps for long. And the leaks completely undermine the need for the show. And one last thing, the primary reason for the demise of the show is the high expense of doing business in Los Angeles. The new mayor of the city has allowed development to run out of control and that's raising the price of everything. This includes hotel bookings, local travel expense, and the booking price on the LACC. Mayor Garcetti doesn't even care about E3, even though it generates over $50 million for downtown LA. In my honest opinion, he's a total fucking retard, and that's helping to kill the Golden Goose. Looking at all the facts that this insider post brings up, it seems very evident that they believe E3 is on its last leg. But I'm going to give you my opinion now. I don't think that's the case. I did it first, but... It seems to me that E3 is still too much of a driving force in the gaming industry to totally phase out of being relevant. And as soon as next year, some people are saying, no way in hell. Let me give you my reasoning though. Every single year, even though we've seen the type of presentations change at E3, Nintendo stopped doing live presentations in 2012 and have been just doing digital presentations from that point forward, they still have a major presence at the actual center. It's usually a massive floor space that's rented out along with great accommodations for the people that are attending. And the reason being is because E3 is meant for the upper echelon of the gaming industry. Anybody who's anybody important with gaming is at E3. That's been an industry standard for years now. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, even with major companies deciding to do their own thing. Now, in 2007, a lot of these companies also took that perspective, but they bought that ass back. So much of the influence is at E3 itself. There's no two ways around it. As admirable as it is for EA to hold their own event that's open to the general public, not all other companies can do this. And if you're smaller on the ladder, you're going to have to go to a major gaming industry event like E3 in order to advertise your product better and to get people excited for you. And that's not going to be able to happen if you hold your own event. The main focus of these events is press. And even EA, having their event open to the public doesn't necessarily mean that the press can't attend. And then on top of it all, EA Plays is literally right across the street from where E3 is going to be. So they're basically holding the door open for anyone that leaves E3 to come into EA's convention. It's that simple. They're not necessarily totally abandoning E3 because if they were, then they wouldn't have their event directly across the street. I think EA's intention was having the same industry press presence without having to spend millions upon millions for the E3 way of doing it. Guys from GameSpot, IGN, Kotaku, Facebook, fucking YouTube, all those dudes are easily going to be able to get into the EA event since it's not something that requires you to give a lung for. One thing that the insider mentioned is that the LACC is not booked for 2017. I don't think you can write that off as E3 being canceled in its entirety. Maybe there's just going to be a shift in where the convention is held. Overall, we don't have enough information to come to a conclusion just yet, but E3 as an event itself is just too major to consider it dying right now, this fast. Maybe there will be a shift over time to a different kind of event, or maybe a whole new medium on how to get information out to the consumers, because this is an important part of what is gaming. And the press is really good at doing this. Maybe they're biased in doing so, but they are able to get the information out there faster than anyone else. So looking at all the facts, while yes, there are a lot of companies that are doing their own thing separate from E3, the vast majority are still going to be at E3. And even the companies like EA, the main spearheader of the whole Leave E3 Behind movement, is doing its event right next to it just to be able to catch some of the press that leave E3. Therefore, you can't say that E3 is going to die. The main point now is these companies are trying not to spend as much money, but that's only if they have their own major kind of money to do their own kind of event, like EA does, but a lot of companies don't. So E3 as a whole, we are not seeing the end of it, and that's my opinion on it, but maybe you disagree with me. I want to see what you guys think about this whole thing in the comments. I tried to make this video not as long because I didn't want to spend super long giving my thoughts on it. I just wanted to look at the facts and give you briefly what my take is, but maybe I'll do another follow-up video addressing some of the other facts that you guys may give up to me in the comments. Either way, I'll talk to you dudes in the next video. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.